Hello and welcome to Modkit Mayhem. This week we're going to be tackling mud. I'll probably do a few series of these because there's so many different types of mud that you can actually kind of achieve. But this one I just wanted to do a really basic bog standard mud you can get using four different products and seeing what kind of results I got. The challenge was to make a kind of mud that was not too dry but not kind of like like a quagmire <laughs> yeah standard mud really and the plan is that you know you'd put this down and then you'd put grass or foliage or whatever you you're going to put on top of it so it's like the most basic kind of base that you can have for diorama or even for war game bases or anything that needs this kind of texture or look so i had some grout which is colored grout so it came in a, like a brown color I did buy it for the Hummel project and um, and it, it worked fine for that, although I found it was a little bit light, so I think if I was to get the grout again, I'd get a darker grout. After that, it's plaster, usual plaster of Paris. It's very white, so you have to put quite a bit of paint in it to get it to become a different colour, otherwise it just looks really kind of, yeah, very bright, so that's a, that's a quite a tricky product to work with. And then regular cake icing sugar, just mix a bit of paint with that, it's very fine, so it should work really well. And then baking powder, I don't even know how that's going to work again. But it's really really fine powder so if you mix it with some paint it should produce some kind of mud uh, and after that a base so i made a little kind of riverbed creek track kind of thing just glue together and then divide it into four sort of spaces so that i could do different tests for each section and uh, and see how they look and compare them to each other first up grout so i mixed this grout if I remember correctly, I used one and a half teaspoons to three pipettes of water and then mix it up, see what looks best and then add either water or more grout or plaster or whatever, you know, whatever you're using and, uh, and try and get it to a sort of density where it is like thick kind of mud. Yeah, you can see grout's quite a tricky one to mix. It's sort of, well, the liquid stays liquid and the grout stays grouty. So you take, after you have to stir it for quite a while before it actually starts kicking in and really mixing up. I added paint and I used the German camo medium from Vallejo. It was a good bog standard brown. Bog, get it. <laughs> I also mixed a little bit of PVA within all of these just to bind it together. So grout was going to be section one. The grout went down fine. It's, it's quite dry, so it could probably, you could have maybe a little bit more water if you wanted. Again, this this sort of this does vary for how much you want to add. But I found it, you know, it worked pretty well and went down very easily on the board. Make sure you just cover everything, do a real good cover, and, uh, and then you don't have to go back and do any more. To be fair, the grout didn't actually dry out any lighter or much lighter than it actually went down. So the paint actually stayed in the in the mix you can dopple the brush just to give it that kind of splotted blatted mud look right onto plaster again this was one and a half teaspoons to one and a half pipettes of water the mixing takes a while, you've got to get it to the consistency that you're happy with and just, you know, add, as you go, just to get it right. Same colour brown mixed in. And a little bit of PVA. I don't think you can really go wrong, as long as you sort of keep the middle road, don't go to extreme with everything and uh, you'll, you'll get some kind of mud no matter what you do. Straight away you can see how much lighter that is compared to the grout. It's, uh, it's almost like a sand colour and it's quite dry as well to mix on. To be fair, it goes on fine and if I wanted to make it dark, I could have always added some black to this. I mean, I kept it with the same colour throughout, just out of interest to see, you know, as a comparison. But if you were just using this, just add some black and that'll make it a lot darker. It's quite convincing mud, you, you know, if you dopple it right, it, uh, it does give that look. It look good sort of for like a woodland, I'd have thought. It's a little bit more drier than the actual grout. It has more definition to it. Whereas the, the grout actually looks a bit more rounded, looking kind of more like sand. Onto the icing sugar now. I didn't know what to expect because I hadn't used this at all. And I mixed it up and the mix was four icing sugars to one per pet. It just goes to show you don't need very much water for this. I also added some PVA just to kind of bind it. 
I think you could get some interesting cracking effects with this if you did it right. Dried it out, kept it very dry and even less water. Straight away you see how that paints on. It's a lot more liquidy and harder to, to, to sort of ply over the surface. But actually, to be honest, it actually gave quite a good look in the end. And uh, yeah, I was quite happy with that because it kind of had a much more slushy Russian front look to it. You know, really that kind of mud with it just sticks vehicles. <laughs> and yeah, you end up pushing the thing out. I let it dry for I don't know, 15 minutes and then doppled it with a brush just to see what kind of texture I could get with it. But invariably, it sort of goes back to that kind of smooth, very wet mud. Right, onto baking powder. Again, I didn't know what to expect. And it wasn't kind of this fizzing mass, uh, like a nuclear bomb. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting. So it fizzed up and, uh, and then as soon as you stir it, it kind of dissolves back down to this weird foamy mix. And uh, I had to really sort of try hard to try and get some kind of, I don't know, element from it. <laughs> you can see I'm fighting it there. You'd mix it and it looked like it'd be a lot. As soon as you stirred it, it'd just go into this sort of like almost bread dough mix. But it was interesting, you know, something was happening and uh, I thought there was no way that I would not give it a go. It becomes kind of like this mix of mess and then as soon as you leave it, then the liquid flows out again and it kind of just rises. It's a really strange, weird effect. Almost like it's alive. The thing. So this was quite hard to actually paint on. You have to really blotch it down. And um, But it, it has a really interesting effect in that it's very dry and becomes almost like a ploughed field or furrowed earth or disturbed earth. So maybe like an explosion if something's in a, outside of a crater where earth has been thrown up into the air and landed. It has a certain look to it. And this kind of had that. Hadn't, you know, hadn't, vehicles hadn't passed over. And I think it, it kind of, it was just tilled earth. So that was quite interesting, I thought. And you, you could use that we're on top of one of the other kind of style of, of soil and uh, it'd give you quite a good effect I think. I must say it, that it does have some very strange kind of properties working with it so I don't know you know it might depending on humidity and uh, and then I think uh, how much water you put in how much how dry it is you're going to get sort of varied results so you have been warned. So there you have it there's the grout the grout looks to me like sand if you painted that a very light color you could get some quite good looking desert scenery with that or earth that's had a lot of water on it you know from rain and it's drying out and it's kind of more rounded or undulating the plaster looks more disturbed it's more rougher and, and much more sort of textured and the icing sugar looks like mud that's just going through on the russian front steps or the Ardennes or something, a lot of rain, and uh, yeah, it looks like it. And then the, the sort of the tilled, crazy earth is <laughs> still living. So I'm hoping that won't go mouldy. <laughs> that would be disastrous. So I thought as an experiment, just to round it up, I'd paint everything in the same colour, just to see what happens and what kind of textures you'd get and what it kind of would look like. So I um. I took the same brown that I'd used and mixed that up and only a little bit of water just to water it down and, and just painted that over the actual base. Straight away it started looking good. And I think with a little bit of dry brushing or something and then, you know, some rocks and some twigs or leaves or whatever it would create quite good looking ground. I'll have to think of some ideas for part two now. Probably some real earth, maybe peat or something. And, uh, you know, try that. And there you can see it there the color in all one uniform color and it, it there's quite varying effects there and then i thought just the final thing see how it is if i put some clear on there very gloss floor polish create a sort of more of a wet look you know in certain areas and uh, that looked really good so i you know took some photos here you can see it the different textures so there you have it this that's this week's video i hope you enjoyed it it was just a quick video this week. I've got quite a bit on, but I've got plenty of ideas for the next projects and I'm quite looking forward to getting on with them. Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe below, hit the like button. That really helps. A big thanks to everybody who's subscribed to the channel recently. I really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you very much for that. Links down below for, and some of the products, if you're interested in where I got them from or which ones I've got, I'll, um, I'll link it down below. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching again. Cheers now. Ta-ra. Bye.